What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Again, John Mack here, your resident video editor and freelance motion graphics designer, giving you tips and tricks on remote work. So this remote work or freelance series is made for guys na gusto i-pursue yung one uh, part-time remote work to mga career shifters natin from corporate people like me na gusto simulan yung pagtatrabaho from home and it can also be from existing remote workers that are planning to shift into new specialties. So for this particular episode guys, pag-uusapan natin yung basic computer specs that you need to have on your workstation when doing remote work. Now, ginawa ko tong episode na to kasi for me personally, ang tagal kong nag-research din countless hours kung ano yung mga magagandang processors na kailangan gamitin for Premiere Pro, for After Effects, ilang gigs ng RAM ba yung dapat kailangan kong bilhin, etc, etc. So, lahat ng yan, itatakil natin dito. This will be a very quick and simple episode. So, let's jump in, guys. So, yung mga pag-uusapan natin dito, guys, is one, the minimum recommended specs. Hindi ng Adobe, guys. Yung minimum recommended specs based on my experience. Pangalawa, yung importance of each specs para maintindihan nyo kung bakit yun yung nire-recommend ko. Pangatlo, is the compatibility of those particular specs. Pang-apat, ano yung nai-experience kong difference between a single, dual, and triple monitor setup like what you see here. Uh, First-hand feedback from someone na natry na lahat ng yun. And last but not the least, my recommended peripherals, specifically yung keyboards natin and yung mouse natin or even siguro yung editing headset. Hati natin yan sa tatlo guys. Uh, I will make this very very simple. Hindi na natin itatakil yung mga, mga wattage, mga PSU na yan kasi magiging very complicated for the beginners guys. So ang pag-usapan lang natin ngayon, yung CPU, yung RAM, tapos yung GPU. So basically yung CPU mo, yun yung parang nagdi-dictate ng speed ng computer mo. Yung RAM is yung parang nag access ng mabilisan ng mga data. Basically for video editors, ang kailangan mo lang maintindihan, the more RAM that you use, the more smoother yung playback mo, number one, less yung mga glitchiness. Tapos pangalawa is you can handle a higher resolution video. And last but not the least, yung GPU mo is in my opinion, more or less for the parang graphic works, yung mga gumagalaw-galaw, yung mga konting effects, mga color grading, dyan po pasok yung GPU natin for video editing and motion graphics. So, unang-una, ang nare-recommend ko for CPU, anything that is 6 cores or higher. Okay, so that's 6 cores or 12 threads and higher. I do not recommend anything for cores and below. Specifically guys, because uh, yung render times nyo or yung pag-export nyo ng video masyadong babagal. And alam naman natin dito sa kabuhayan natin, it's very very important for you guys to have a fast PC or a faster turnaround of your renders for you to get more projects. So ang recommended CPU ko is uh, depende sa'yo kung anong mas gusto mo, Intel or AMD, nasa sa'yo yan. Personally, I'm using both, pero yung bago kong PC, yung luma kong PC is Intel, and uh, yun, yun na yung naging backup PC ko. It's using an i7, tapos the new AMD that I'm using now is uh, Ryzen 5 3600. Personally, in my experience, uh, for 2020, the Ryzen 5 3600 will, will be more than enough to handle anything from Full HD up to 4K. For RAM naman, ang recommended ko is 16 gigabytes and above. Don't go below 16 gigabytes, guys, kasi magkakaroon kayo ng issues sa playback. Now, if you're using After Effects like I am, I recommend that you get 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes. Personally speaking, hindi pa naman ako dumating dun sa point na nagmamax out ako sa RAM. Maybe because lahat ng After Effects na compositions ko is currently on Full HD. Hindi pa ako nag-4K on After Effects. nag nag 4 k lang ako sa Premiere Pro. So, 32GB is more than enough if you're using 1080p sa After Effects. Okay? But, once na you touch the After Effects software, I generally recommend 32GB. Wala nang bababa doon, guys. Uh, this is because a lot of the times, you will be uh, previewing yung effects. Ipi-playback mo siya. And if you're using 16GB of RAM, masyadong matagal yung buffering niya. Okay guys, so lipat naman tayo sa GPU. GPU basically takes care of the graphics part and color grading part of your videos. Now, kung Premiere Pro yan, ito yung mga nag apply ka ng mga LUTs, color correction, color grading. Kung nag After Effects ka naman, ito yung mga extensions mo like yung mga crop codes particular, yung mga animations mo. I-add mo na rin yung mga default na mga transitions or uh, mga effects 
ng Premiere Pro and After Effects that are GPU accelerated. Personally speaking, I don't recommend you splurging out on graphics card because of two things. One, hindi ganon ka na ma max out or ibig sabihin hindi siya nagiging bottleneck for video editing even on 4K on Premiere Pro hindi siya nagiging bottleneck. But speaking from a 1050 Ti user na gumagamit ng tatlong monitors. Now, if you'd ask me kung naka-experience na ba ako na nag-max out ng VRAM ko, I would say siguro sa lahat ng mga inedits ko, mga 3 or 4 times pa lang. And nagkataon na sobrang haba nung timeline and sobrang daming effects kong nilagay. Pero wala namang hindi na-resolve by me just restarting my computer, clearing the cache and all that um, parang basic troubleshooting steps na ginagawa natin. So again, ulitin ko lang, for video editing and content creation work, you should not spend a lot on your GPU unless you're using other video editing software. Ang second reason natin dito guys is uh, thankfully a lot of um, the users on GPUs are using it for gaming na ang tendency is mas matataas na specs yung mga ginagamit nila and pag medyo naluma na nila yun or pagka hindi na sila satisfied how their, their games run on those uh, graphics cards ang dami nyan sa second hand market na you can snag for a discount so yun pa yung isang recommended ko just look for the second hand market of these discounted gaming cards kasi generally speaking kahit hindi na ganun kalakas for gaming yung mga graphics card nila eh pwedeng pwede pa yun for content creation work ang example ko dito is right now Uh, March 2020, ang dami ko nakikita na on sale na 1066GB. And upon seeing the benchmarks of Puget Systems for Premiere Pro and After Effects, the, set that the 1066GB are trading blows with the Vega graphics card. So yung mga mas matataas na caliber ng, ng graphics card. And even NVIDIA's RTX series. So in my opinion, hindi pa worth nung upgrade if you're just getting mga uh, single digit improvement lang in terms of compute power for the GPUs. May ibig sabihin dito, hindi worth yung mag-invest ka ng mga 10, 15, or 20k for a very powerful graphics card. At this point, you're better off buying a more powerful CPU and just upgrading your RAM. So, lipat naman tayo guys sa brand compatibility. Ang ibig ko lang sabihin dito guys, you have to make sure that whatever parts you are picking for your computer works flawlessly. For example, bumili ka ng mamahalin or high performing RAM, hindi naman pala na-utilize yun ng CPU and motherboard mo. Or nagpa-plano ka pala mag-overclock ng RAM, ng GPU and ng CPU, pero yung motherboard mo, hindi naman kaya. So, uh, you just have to make sure that everything works flawlessly. And wala akong particular na magiging example for this one. But just to be sure, do your research and consult the forums. Okay, so lipat tayo sa single monitor versus dual monitor versus triple monitor. Nagawa ko to lahat. Guys, I experience ko to lahat. I personally used yung laptop dun ako nag-start. Tapos gumamit ako ng... Uh, monitor yung full size na monitor which is natuwa ako kasi from a 13-14 inch na laptop tapos lumipat ka sa uh, siguro mga 17 inch na monitor which is <laughs> ngayon nga naliliitan na ako for that one um, if you're using this for productivity I really suggest na you go for a triple monitor setup now a lot of you guys are wondering what if Jomak yung sobrang widescreen na lang na isang monitor yes actually may point kayo maganda rin naman yun kaya lang meron siyang dalawang downside yung una yung cost, napakamahal nung isang, for example, ako, I'm using three 24-inch monitors right now, and pag bumili ako ng isang 72-inch na screen, baka mamulubi ako sa cost. So, mas matipid kung bumili ka ng tatlong monitor na hati-hati kaysa isang malapad na screen. Pangalawan naman dito, guys, is a lot of the times you're using uh, parang yung Windows Snap feature for your Windows, yung, yung mga bins mo. And for a single monitor setup, medyo hindi ganun kadaling ayusin yung mga windows na yon Hindi siya nag snap into place. When, if you're using a mara multiple monitors kahit hindi man 24 inch, kahit 22 inch, 20 inch, or 19 inch, or whatever, using multiple monitors will enable you to uh, arrange your windows more properly. And actually, yung biggest reason kung bakit ako uh, lumipat sa triple monitor setup is because I can have yung timeline and yung project panel ko dun sa middle, yung main monitor ko. Tapos on this side, andito lahat ng bins ko, yung mga assets, yung mga kailangan ko yung imports. 
Tapos on the third monitor naman, nandito yung Spotify kung gusto mong uh, listening to music while working and also you can have more importantly yung tutorials ng YouTube para habang nagpa-play yun, sinusundan ko on my project panels. And last but not the least guys, sorry humaba yung video na to pero I really want to tackle as much as possible para hindi kayo magkaroon ng buyer's remorse. Okay, so pasadaan natin ng konti yung peripherals. Um, Generally speaking, if you're not using or if hindi naman ganun ka-sensitive sa audio yung client, yung huwag na kayong bumili ng headset. Actually, ako bumili pa ako ng semi-open back na pang editing na headset. Actually, dalawa nga yung binili ko pero hindi ko nagagamit. What I'm currently using is just this iPhone na na stock na headset. And para sa akin, okay siya. Hindi mainit sa tenga, comfortable kahit maghapon kong gamitin. Walang nagiging problema. In fact, I'm also seeing a lot of the YouTubers are using this particular headset for editing. So, it just shows na it's not the headset itself. It's just the person editing or making the cuts. Again, disclaimer, you should not use this kung audio sensitive or mga music videos yung in-edit nyo. I just recommend using this one kung hindi kayo gumagawa ng sound design. Alright? Pangalawa, ang recommended ko naman for the keyboard is a brown switch. Personally, I'm using a blue switch one. Okay naman to for me. Kaya lang ang problema if you're typing a lot, which ako uh, being a video editor slash nag-aaral din ako ng coding right now, medyo nakakapagod sa kamay. So, I recommend either going for a red switch na mechanical, mechanical keyboard or a brown switch mechanical keyboard. And most importantly, 90% of the time, ito yung hindi gamit nyo guys, very important yung mouse. So, you should opt for a wireless mouse para less hassle ng cable drag. Pangalawa is you should opt for a light mouse. Marami sa ating, uh, syempre sa kabuhay natin, uh, kailangan iwasan natin sumasakit yung wrist natin guys. So, I use, I'm using two mice right now. Yung unang mouse ko is yung uh, Vixing. Actually, yung mga murang mouse lang itong ginagamit ko. Uh, pero sobrang ganda ng mga feedback nila, both on Amazon and Lazada. So, the one I'm using right now is about 300-400 pesos na mouse lang na wireless. Tapos, yung pangalawa ko naman, I think I bought this for about mga 950, mga 900, mga ganyan, more or less. It's a vertical mouse. So, kaya ako nag-shift from yung ordinary mouse to vertical mouse kasi nagkaroon ako ng parang RSI sa wrist ko. And ever since I used yung vertical mouse natin, sobrang thankful ako na wala yun. And even if I edit for about 12, 14, sometimes 16 hours in a day, wala ako nagiging problema on my hands. Alright, so that wraps up this episode guys. I hope marami kayong takeaways for your future gear. And feel free to engage me on the comments section kung meron kayong mga additional questions or topics that you want to discuss. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, a big fat juicy thumbs up. Kung hindi mo naman nagustuhan, sabihin mo lang kung ano yung pwede nating baguhin moving forward or if you want to tackle a different topic. And also, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching guys. Shoma here and peace out.